Okay, so uh, Dr. Aslan, uh, let me share the screen with you. So now you can share the screen as well. So we welcome Dr. Salan to the second session of our lecture, starting from 5.45 p.m. Okay, I'll uh, share my screen. Uh, before we proceed, I want to take a picture session also. So I request everybody to open their cameras, freestyle uh, cameras, no nothing to be formal or anything. So whoever can open their cameras, can you please open your cameras? I want to take a picture of you guys together with our instructor, Dr. Islam. So requesting students to open their cameras. Okay, very good, Banish. And uh, anybody else? Indra or Clarence is here with us. Okay, good. Clarence is here with us. So that we have a attendance confirmation as well for this global classroom. So, so we have Clarence and Mr. Arte also. Setting in okay, and Nicholas is here as well. Okay, very good. Thank you. So, you guys can proceed with uh, you know, taking notes for the assignment as well. So, just one question Did you guys complete the assignment number four already or did not start it yet? Or you guys started already the previous assignment? Not sir. Not sir. Okay. Okay, so if you have not started the previous assignment, then cancel that previous assignment, okay? So this will be an easier assignment for you guys now, uh, which is related to this lecture only. Previous assignment, which was related to presentation, is going to be cancelled, okay? Okay, so now thank you for the pictures and everything. So uh, I will... Okay, so uh, let's start. Uh, so... We already uh, know about friction, so we'll skip that. And this is how basically we, we can calculate friction. Uh, the the coefficient of friction, the formula for that is uh, the friction uh, the, the the friction force divided by the normal load. So uh, you can find various variants of this uh, in various books, but this is a general um, formula that is used. Uh, it, it it will obviously change uh, the normal load will change once the contact uh, what type of contact is present so it is going to change so expect that this is a quite general for general parameter so there are some uh, uh, there are some basically intrinsic and then there are some extrinsic factors which uh, affect the tribological uh, pair or the the whole uh, the, uh, the the tribological what we call uh, the system. Uh, the extrinsic factors include uh, the sliding speed, sliding distance, applied load, temperature. This can uh, this can basically uh, uh, change the real characteristics of the contact. Uh, so, what is the coefficient of real? You can basically uh, uh, calculate by using Archer equation, or the coefficient of real can be found by a uh, real volume. Uh, divided by the applied load and the sliding distance. So if the uh, rear volume is uh, greater, obviously the coefficient of rear will be high, but if the, uh, the, the sliding distance is uh, greater, the coefficient of friction will be low. So it is uh, directly and indirectly proportional. you can observe that. So what are the various mechanisms and what are the various theories that are present in rear? Uh, uh, there are... Uh, Various theories such as abrasion theory, adhesion theory, uh, fatigue also has various theories and corrosion. Uh, due to these basically mechanisms, the wear occurs at the surface. Uh, this, uh, this is an example of uh, abrasive wear. You can see that the two bodies are basically interacting with one another, 
and you can observe that this kind of uh, uh, this is the this is the and okay uh, so if you see this uh, mobile phone you can see that the surface is quite smooth but once you start to observe it using scanning electron microscope or you start to observe it using the uh, advanced uh, imaging software uh, which can uh, see at micrometer nanometer levels you will be see you will be observing this type of basically what we are uh, right now what we are seeing over here this type of basically surfaces will be you will be observing this type of surfaces so based on what type of surface or what type of roughness is present at the surface the the, the uh, between the contact the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, wear is going to change so uh, again uh, loading is also one important aspect you can see that this part is uh, 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 this part broke off and then there is three body abrasion and this is something which is uh, 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 the example you can take that if you uh, like uh, put some stones uh, between your hands and you start to rub with them you will be seeing that there will be scratches on your on your hands so this is similar to that that there are there the details there is uh, there is a third body that is present between these two bodies and uh, the second imaginary body of the sphere you can see that this now this third body is going to create scratches uh, on the surface and this is uh, uh, something which is going to deteriorate your surface quickly and then there is a uh, adhesive layer and adhesive layer is something which is uh, uh, which is directly related to plastic deformation and it is also related to uh, and it is also related to the chemical interaction between the uh, surfaces fatigue wear you can see that uh, the due to cyclic loading this uh, the, the 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 parts are basically wearing off and uh, uh, obviously you uh, in order to reduce all of these issues you need to modify your surface by using various techniques such as uh, surface modification techniques such as uh, by using lasers uh, by using uh, 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 by lasers to extract material such as laser texturing or by adding material or uh, what you can say that by coating the surfaces by hard coating such as laser cladding which is uh, i still remember that dr moin is uh, mashallah an expert in laser cladding and he has published uh, quite a number of papers on laser cladding so that is where we use lasers to add material to the surface rather than to remove material whereas what i did in my phd was to remove material by using lasers to enhance the uh, to enhance uh, the overall performance of that uh, contact. So, um, what is abrasive wear? As I already mentioned uh, in my in the previous slide, uh, abrasive wear is caused by either foreign hard particles or surface asperities of relatively harder surfaces. You will be often observing that the uh, the particles or the chips that are being formed regularly. During uh, your turning operation or doing that, the, the the machinist is you are normally trying to remove that from the contact, and that is very important because they are, the, they are going to adversely affect the surfaces again and again if they are present at the contact the uh, the chips that are already formed. Uh, it involves sliding of trapped particles between the two sliding surfaces along with the interacting surfaces at the contact area. Uh, it reduces uh, uh, to an appreciable extent by continuously removing debris from contact using filters and magnetic drain plugs. So basically, what I just told you that uh, if your if the machinist is continuously removing those particles from the while uh, while the, the uh, while you are performing turning operation or milling operation or whatever, uh, you will be able to reduce the abrasive wear at the at the tool, and that is going to uh, 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 absolutely. That is going to increase the life of your cutting tool while you are doing performing various operations. Uh, another uh, important is adhesive wear. Uh, adhesive bonding at the contact interface with sufficient strength to resist sliding. Plastic deformation. Plastic deformation of the contact resulting in dislocation and crack initiation. Propagation of crack due to combined effect of tension and shearing resulting in complete fracture and detaching of wear particles from one surface and transfer to another. Just like this example, you can see it over here. 
uh, there is plastic deformation or there is what you call you can also call it uh, the, 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 these um, uh, these uh, or the, the uh, ridges are welded together and once uh, they start to move then uh, whichever is uh, stronger is going to take away the other other material as you can observe uh, while it is moving So, um, transferring materials. Here, particles of donor surface or phytochemical compound form as a result of uh, a result of sliding. Fatigue wear happens when asperities make and break contact with each other with very high levels of local stresses during sliding or rolling. A certain number of contact cycle leads to the formation and propagation of cracks, which eventually results fracture of asperities. And then there is corrosive wear too. Uh, corrosive air is also related to the chemical um, interaction or in the chemical uh, reactions that are occurring at the surface, so or the environmental species that are interacting. So we need to be careful about uh, uh, the environment in which we are basically using our machinery. Uh, we, uh, we, as we already discussed this. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll briefly study this. Formation of what is corrosive wear, formation of weakly adhered layers of chemical compounds due to interaction of surfaces with lubricant additives or environmental asperities. Removal of corrosive layer from the contact surface due to adhesive, uh, due to subsequent sliding or rolling. So, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, that uh, uh, in an automotive engine, uh, if you are using the uh, um, to call uh, if you are using uh, uh, renewable fuels such as green fuels or biofuels, or you are using that, or even you are using the uh, biolubricants, and then the corrosion corrosive element is then uh, they they are corrosive to the components of an automotive engine. So uh, what you need to do so that you can use green or biolubricants in an automotive engine or uh, you want to use uh, while it is uh, while you are performing manufacturing operations, you have to add corrosion inhibitors or corrosion uh, inhibiting additives into your lubricant or uh, the cutting fluid that you are using. That is important, otherwise, the corrosion is going to affect uh, your fiber uh, pair. Uh, so, uh, lubrication is uh, as we were. Uh, we studied in the previous slide the lubrication is something which is present, lubricant is present at the interfaces. Um, and uh, the purpose is basically to reduce uh, in, in manufacturing. Uh, for example, you are cutting using the, uh, while you are, are using the lathe machine, on a lathe machine, you are cutting, you are doing a turning operation, you will be using the uh, uh, coolants and you will be using the lubricant so that you can lower the temperature at the uh, at the tool and the chip interface so that the tool life can be enhanced. So lubricants can play uh, several roles. One of them is uh, to act as a coolant to take away heat. Uh, another is to uh, re reduce the, um, what you call, you know, or other is to uh, reduce the chemical reaction that can occur due to high temperatures uh, at the interface. And uh, another thing that lubricant can do is to provide, um, is to what you can uh, say is to provide a barrier uh, so that uh, the, the two surfaces do not directly come into contact with one another. Because at that time, the wear is going to be more compared to if you are uh, providing a lubricant between the two surfaces. So lubricant can provide various, uh, uh, can play various roles basically. Uh, this is uh, these are the advantages that I just mentioned that they can help in carrying load. Uh, they can remove debris dirt from the surface. They can dissipate heat. They can reduce the friction at the contact. So uh, the, the, these are the various uh, uh, roles that they can perform. There are various types of lubricants, uh, as we studied in the previous slide, that they, they can be solid in nature and they can be in fluid uh, lubricants. Uh, solid lubricants can, uh, in the last like, few years, uh, several solid lubricants uh, are, uh, are being used uh, in, the, in research, uh, for research purposes. 
and uh, especially uh, these uh, lubricants are being used in uh, uh, especially these lubricants are being used uh, are being used in uh, uh, in uh, in the uh, spacecrafts <clears throat> because uh, once you are in space you won't be able to use uh, nickel lubricants so the solid lubricants such as calcium disulfide molybdenum disulfide they are being used by nasa and the other uh, space agencies so, so that uh, the the the, uh, the moving object the moving components in an uh, in a spaceship uh, can be basically can, uh, can be lubricated so um, solid lubricants they have uh, this uh, inherent self lubricating capability due to the layer structure uh, one of the solid lubricant is graphite and uh, graphite is generally very easily very easily available and uh, the, uh, uh, the the layers between the graphite basically they the the if you see the bond between the layers you can see that it can easily slide over one another and that is why they reduce the friction so uh, solid lubricants are quite uh, good in reducing friction and uh, they do not create that kind of mess uh, which a uh, nickel lubricant creates while we want to, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, while we want to uh, throw away or while we have used it. So uh, in in the case of fluid, you have liquids uh, uh, such as engine oils, gear oils, transmission oils, all of these are examples of uh, nickel lubricants or fluid lubricants. So how can you make uh, uh, my, my students were conducting the research on uh, the bio lubricants for uh, cutting as a cutting fluid. So what we found was that uh, uh, that, that always the, the main the or the base oil base oil the the uh, bio lubricant that you create from or the green lubricant that you create from uh, various sources. Uh, such as uh, or palm oil, you can create bio lubricant or green lubricant from palm oil, but that will be the base oil. You have to add an additive package into it. You have to add friction modifiers, you have to add uh, rear modifiers, you have to add uh, corrosion inhibitors into it, and then you can make uh, a, a fully formulated lubricant. Because what you use in your automotive engines while you are uh, driving a motorbike or while you are driving a car, uh, you basically use fully formulated lubricants that come from Zik and uh, various companies, Shell Oil and all, all the other companies. So the base oil uh, can be of various types such as natural uh, base oils and then there are synthetic base oils. Uh, natural uh, are obtained from bio-based uh, sources that I just mentioned, petroleum-based oils, obtained from natural sources such as petroleum and vegetable foods. So petroleum based are uh, mainly 95% of the lubricants are, are consumed worldwide depend on this type of, and that is why uh, it is environmentally hazardous and we have to basically, we are continuously trying and the world is continuously trying to uh, lower the usage of uh, petroleum based and move towards the uh, green lubricants. Uh, but it is, uh, but there are uh, some good things, and then there are some hurdles, such as cost. Cost is one of the uh, things that is a hurdle uh, in, in this to, to minimize the role of petroleum based oils. So, bio based oils, if you uh, look at the bio based oil, they are they come from vegetable, animal fats, and waste material. Uh, recently, one of my uh, uh, research uh, students they work with chicken fat oil. They took chicken fat and then they converted it into biofuel and biolubricant. So a uh, lot of things can be done in this area, and uh, they can be they can be used to protect the environment. Uh, Soybean, sunflower, rapeseed, palm oil, jitrof oil, and canola oil are also used uh, in various countries to produce biodegradable oils. So synthetic oils, uh, such as poly or polyphen, they are artificially produced in a lab. They are short chain hydrocarbons produced by cracking of crude oils. Some of the synthetic base oils are also produced from raw materials other than petroleum. Now, physiochemical properties of these oils are tailored according to the. I just mentioned that you have to add additives. 
uh, represents small fair fragment of the lubricant market due to higher prices compared to the petroleum based. Once you will go to the market buy something for your uh, motorbike, they will tell you that uh, you want synthetic or you want natural, like petroleum based or synthetic. So synthetic, uh, uh, for example, uh, polyalpholipin, they, they are expensive. These are the various lubricant uh, and the additives that you can add. Uh, these are the base oils, polyalpholipin, paraffinic, mineral oil, APA group one. These are the various groups that uh, you can basically use. These are the additives, uh, GMO, ZWDP, and MODPC. These are the various additives that are present. And uh, this is the, uh, uh, these are the various circle for the lubricants that are present in the market. Uh, 5W30, 5W20, 75W35. Uh, so this uh, you can buy from market. Now uh, we already studied this. So additive packages, I just mentioned uh, you see that uh, additives are the ones that are basically added in various percentages so that uh, you can uh, uh, vary the physiochemical properties based on the application. Like if you are using them for in a manufacturing for manufacturing uh, purposes, then you have to see which type of manufacturing process in which you are going to use that. You have to see the, the, the speed, the sliding speed, the load, the temperature, and then you have to modify the lubricant. And if you are going to use it in an automotive engine, then again, you have to see what type of uh, contact is present where you are using that, what type of engine, what in which environment. For example, you are using an automotive engine in Canada. What type of uh, physiochemical properties that lubricant should have? And uh, you are using it in um, Malaysia. So the temperature and the weather will be different. So based on that, you have to add friction modifiers into the air additives, extreme pressure additives, detergents, viscosity modifiers, dispersants, antioxidants, and uh, corrosion inhibitors. All of these additives are added into the uh, lubricant. So what are the lubrication regimes that are present? Uh, in the start of my lecture, I mentioned that uh, Osborne Reynolds basically worked on hydrodynamic lubrication regime. Uh, these are the base, various regimes that are present at the contact. For example, if you say that uh, there are mainly there are three regimes, we'll study them in this in the in next slides. So basically, uh, it is very easy to understand the various regimes if we use the Strybeck curve. Strybeck curve is something which graphically illustrates the lubricant regimes. Uh, which basically relates coefficient of friction to the summer field number. What is the summer field number? A summer field number is basically a dimensionless parameter which represents operating conditions of a contact. Summer field number is ratio of product of lubricant viscosity and contact velocity to the applied load. This is an example. Uh, uh, this is an illustration of various regimes. You can see it over here on, on the y-axis, we have friction coefficient. And on the x-axis, we have speed. On the, uh, in the first area, in the first part of this curve, you can see that the, 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 the a green line is quite smooth and it is uh, uh, near the horizontal to the x-axis. This is where you say that the friction coefficient, this is the boundary regime. Okay, in this area, the speed is quite less. In this area, the speed is less and the friction coefficient is more. If the speed is less, due to the due to less speed, the the, the two surfaces, this um, uh, this the two surfaces are nearly coming into contact with one another. And there is a very thin line of lubricant present between these surfaces. And even the asperities or the rough surface is coming into contact with one another. So the friction is high. As we move forward to the mixed lubrication regime, you can see that the friction coefficient is coming down. You can see that the friction coefficient is coming down as the speed is increasing. And uh, uh, over here, you can observe that the two surfaces are now apart and the lubricant is thick or the lubricant is thickness is more compared to that 
which was in the boundary lubrication. And as we move forward with the speed, you can see that the coefficient of friction is slightly increasing, but you can observe the two surfaces are now apart, but due to the, what you call the viscosity of the lubricant, because you know that uh, if something, some uh, liquid is viscous, it will be very difficult for you to slide anything between them, uh, between a, a slide, uh, slide uh, a plate on that viscous, on that highly viscous fluid. So it is difficult. So viscosity also plays an important role in this. And that is why in the, in the sub, uh, subaltern number, basically we, uh, we, we, we inculcate the viscosity term. But in this, in this form of stribal curve, we are not basically generally looking at the uh, viscosity. So uh, this, these are the various regimes that are present. And uh, uh, while uh, we are discussing the manufacturing part, uh, uh, during turning or while we are doing the machine or while we are uh, drilling, uh, normally we are operating in boundary lubrication. So uh, another variant of Stribeck curve basically which relates to uh, the coefficient of friction uh, to a dimensionless film parameter, uh, which is the ratio of minimum film thickness to surface roughness of interaction. There are there is another uh, Stribeck curve. For, you you can find various formations or various types of Stribeck curves on, on the internet. This is uh, these are the two forms you can see over here, and now we will discuss them. In the first diagram, in the first figure, you can see. This is uh, depicting that the film thickness is on the y-axis, and on the x-axis you can see sum of field number, which is viscosity into velocity divided by the load. So uh, you can observe, you can see uh, here, you can see it over here that uh, the, uh, the this the first region over here, this one, is the uh, boundary lubrication. And in the boundary lubrication, you can see the film thickness is quite less. As we move from second to third to fourth, you can see the film thickness is increasing. At this point, at the second point, this is the mixed film friction, mixed regime. Okay. And this one over here is the elastro hydrodynamic lubrication regime. Okay. And the last one is hydrodynamic lubrication regime. You can see that the maximum film thickness is present in hydrodynamic lubrication regime. Okay. Uh, so uh, when the lubrication film thickness is high, obviously viscosity is going to play a lot of a lot more role uh, in the overall friction compared to uh, compared to this area over here, where the film thickness or the lubrication film thickness is quite less. And once we see the friction coefficient versus the summer field number, you can observe that the friction coefficient is high when the when we are present in boundary lubrication regime. But as the velocity is increasing, the you can see that in a mixed regime, the, the friction is coefficient is coming down. And as we increase the uh, as we basically increase it further on, you can see that the friction coefficient goes on increasing. And uh, once you can you can observe the film thickness, you can also see that as uh, in the EHL regime, the film thickness is increasing. And over here, you can see that uh, if the film thickness is increasing, friction coefficient is also increasing. So uh, we cannot basically uh, it, it is not a simple relationship between film thickness and uh, friction. You have to see the viscosity is viscosity starts to play a, a, a more role uh, once uh, the thickness of the film, once the thickness of the lubricant starts to increase. So you cannot only um, say that uh, that as these um, two surfaces starts to come into contact, that is where friction is more. Friction can increase if uh, the lubricant viscosity is higher. So the, these are the, uh, this is what I explained to you uh, previously in the, uh, that uh, uh, in the boundary lubrication, the, um, the two bodies are in contact with each other. 
and uh, in the next regime, we can see that it happens when lubricant slips out of the contact during sliding due to unfavorable operating conditions. High level of friction we are experienced in this lubrication. So what can we do or what uh, what can be done if we want to reduce a friction in boundary lubrication regime? Uh, what we can do is we can uh, modify the lubricant. Uh, and second thing we can do is that we can uh, uh, modify the surface uh, by laser surface texturing or by laser cladding or other techniques so that uh, if the lubricant film thickness is liquid lubricant thickness is less, uh, that, that can be um, the, the overall effect can be lowered by other techniques such as the surface modification. So in the, in the uh, mixed lubrication, there is a transition from boundary to fluid film or hydrodynamic regime. Uh, lubricant film is largely present between the interaction, but some aspect is remain in contact with each other. As we saw it over here, in this, some asperities are in contact, but overall it is separate. Uh, frequent asperity contacts at the surface results in high values of friction. Mostly experienced at the start and the stop of the machines having EHL lubrication regime, like uh, where the while you are increasing the speed and while it is coming to an end. EHL regime. This was the third regime, which is between the mixed lubrication and the hydrodynamic lubrication. This is a thin film of lubricant that exists between the interacting surfaces. It basically shows that the heavier localized applied load decreases the lubricant viscosity. Okay. It elastically deforms the contact area of asperities. Further increasing load results in slipping out of the lubricant from the contact area. And the asperities of the interacting surfaces come back to in contact with each other and the regime starts to change to boundary lubrication. So uh, if you are going to increase the load further, the lubricant may slip out and the contact uh, pressure is going to increase and the, <clears throat> the contact can go back into boundary lubrication. So this is the ideal lubrication regime. <coughs> this is thick lubricant is present between the surfaces. Lubrication film uh, not only prevents direct asperity contents, <coughs> but also supports the applied load without slipping out. So um, this is this was basically our uh, uh, this was basically our uh, lecture where we uh, studied the various uh, regimes and we basically studied uh, various uh, how uh, what can we do when we are uh, what can be done when we are basically focusing on uh, uh, reducing the energy consumption? What are the options? What can we do? And what can be done when we want to select uh, what type of manufacturing process we are using? So this, these are the various things that we covered <coughs> in today's lecture. Any questions, any comments you can uh, add any discussion that you want to have? So any question, guys? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, so very good. So uh, this concludes uh, the lecture for today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Aslan, for giving thank a you, very sir, good briefing on tribology uh, uh, and liquid applications. Especially the history part was quite nice. At least you can see uh, how it looks uh, from the prehistoric age until the 19th century. That part was quite good here. Yeah, exactly. It was it was good uh, uh, to teach um, uh, students. Uh, we already have previously uh, response of his methodology lecture two, so it is it is good that uh, we keep on interacting, Dr. Moy. And uh, this knowledge sharing is, is important. This collaboration is quite important. And uh, wish you best of luck, uh, all the students. And I hope that uh, you will be able to uh, while. Uh, after becoming an engineer, you will be able to um, inculcate the rules and regulations that uh, are important in order to increase the lifetime of the components that you are basically maintaining. So, uh, Thank you very much. I think for the assignment, uh, the students might require the slides.
So maybe okay, you okay, I'll send you the slides. And okay, I'll, I'll send you the slides. To students so that they can complete the assignment. So, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll share the slides. Yeah, so we are going to conclude our global classroom for PHA 2403 manufacturing process class. Uh, our invited guest was Dr. Aslan Ahmed, and he has completed lecture on tribology, introduction, and its application. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you in the next class. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.